What if I told you that with the right techniques, you could model anything from simple characters to custom mobs, items, and even your worlds? I've spent months mastering Blender and Blockbench, and now I'm here to teach you everything I've learned. Preparation. Before even opening Blender, we will have to prepare our simple player model. For this, download Blockbench. It's a free Minecraft modeling platform. Click here, then locate your skin file and select your skin type, Steve or Alex. Turn off pose, but turn on second layer. Blockbench will create a player model with your skin. Make sure to also click here to get the second layer showing. Then export it as a GLTF model with no animation, but turn on the aperture feature. After that, give your model a name and click save. We will get back to it in a bit. After downloading and opening Blender, click the escape button on your keyboard. Then select and delete that ugly cube and light. Now, let's look around. Blender is scary, but don't you worry, I'm going to show what you actually need to make high quality renders. On top of our screen, we can see all the different tabs Blender has. We're going to use only two of them layout and shading. There are also these four circles, each of them changes the view mode. Just click on them and see how it looks. Then on the left side we have our moving buttons. Those allow us to move and rotate stuff. And lastly we have all of these scary looking boxes on the right. I will explain what each of them does later in the video. By the way, to rotate around the workspace, click your mouse scroll wheel and drag around and to move, do the same thing but also hold shift. You can also zoom in using mouse scroll wheel and hold holding the control button on your keyboard. Click on this orange box icon while you have your model selected. Now, if you want to make your model bigger or smaller, move the scale XYZ sliders to change the size of your object. Also, select the model and then click G, that way your object will follow your mouse cursor. Every new Blender project already comes with a pre-created camera, which you can set up by clicking on this camera icon. That will teleport you into the camera and then go into view right here and select camera to view. Now, if you move your mouse around, it will move the camera with it. If you want to use Minecraft items, mobs, and blocks, download MC Prep. It's a free Blender add-on that allows you to add all of those things. You can find their official website in the description together with a short tutorial on how to install it. After you downloaded it, click here and you will see all the stuff that MC Prep adds. You can click on all the buttons and see what they do. For example, if you want to add a pickaxe, you have to go under the item spawner box, click reload assets, and find a diamond pickaxe. Then you click place and it appears in your workspace. After that, you can pose it using rotation and movement buttons. If you want to change the textures of items and blocks from MC Prep add-on, select an already placed model or models, then click this box, make sure JMC2OBJ World Exporter is selected, and lastly, find the swap texture pack option. To change the texture pack, you will have to unzip the texture pack folder first, and then open it and double click the texture pack's image, like this. Blender will immediately switch to that texture pack. Modeling. Now we can import our player file into Blender and start modeling it. There is a lot that can be said about posing your character. Some thumbnails need you to move it a lot, others don't. It all comes down to your or your client's preference and the thumbnail style you're going for. But I'm going to tell you a few tips that you can use. Minecraft player models only have six bones. And by moving the model's body parts, you can get pretty good poses, but what if you want them to look better? A bit more realistic? Imagine that on top of the six normal bones, we have five extra bones. These bones are not connected to anything and we can't see them. Now, if you pose a character and use those imaginary bones too, by disconnecting body parts from where they are usually located, you can get results like these. To make sure your poses are realistic, look at real life images of people in positions you want to recreate. Modeling takes a lot of time and energy, and that's why I recommend you to take breaks. Lately, I've been playing on one of the most challenging Minecraft servers I've ever seen. It's called Chunk Lock. You spawn in a single chunk, and from there, you have to expand and grow your empire, one chunk at a time. And every decision matters, so you have to make the right choices and prioritize different resources. There are adventure islands, bosses, daily events, and surprise airdrops. Unlock workers to farm resources faster and become stronger by leveling up. Plus, it's completely free to join and you can play with your friends on Java and Bedrock Edition. So yeah, if you're looking for a fresh Minecraft challenge, give Chunk Lock a try. Go ahead and join with this IP. Armor. This is a topic that not many people explain how to do. So here I am showing you how to do it. Open Blockbench, 
Create a new Minecraft skin model right here, but switch model type to armor mate. Find your armor model, I recommend using a resource pack to do that, search up the armor file, and switch view to image so you can see how the texture looks, find one that is somewhat similar to this. Click OK, deselect the pose box, make sure to turn on the second layer box though, and create the model. After that, click on File, Convert Project, and turn off Create Copy Feature, then Confirm. Do the same steps for leggings. Switch the model type to Armor Leggings, like shown on screen, and find a texture file that is similar to this. Do the same steps as shown before. After you finish, you can create a normal Minecraft skin, make it a generic model, and import your armor to it, like this. To make your armor stick with the skin, drag every folder to the Minecraft skin parent model. For example, file named head, which has the helmet, put it in the head folder, which has the player head, and so on. Keep in mind that boots and leggings go to legs folders. You can export the whole model now, the same way as I showed you before. Sponsor. This video has been made by me, myself, and I. So if you want to help me make more videos like this, subscribe, like, and comment. Also join my Discord server if you have any questions. Now back to the tutorial! Background. Sometimes I don't use Blender to render the background. It takes too long. And instead, I just take a screenshot in Minecraft. To put it as a reference image in Blender, click Add, then find Image, then select Background. Locate your wanted background in your files. It will appear in Blender. You can move it, scale it, rotate it, however you want. But if you want to use Blender for the world render too, then you have to download Mineways. It's a free software that allows you to export your Minecraft worlds into Blender. By the way, all the links are in the description. After downloading, open it and click File, Open World, Find Your World. Locate your Minecraft world file, double click it, go all the way down and find the levels file. It has all of your world info. After double clicking it, this little window will pop up, left click and drag to move around. Right click and select part of the world that you want. In the new window, press OK. Now to export it, click File, Export for Rendering. Name it something and press OK again. Wait a little for your world to save. Close Mineways and go back to Blender. Import OBJ file and find your world. Or just drag and drop it right into Blender. Your world will look a little bit blurry though, so to fix that, select it and then open MC Prep window. Click Prep Materials, give it a second to fix your world, and after that, you can move it, turn it, and scale it if needed. Lights. Next, we're going to talk about lights. It's a very important part of any Blender render, and it can make or break your image. To create a light source, click on Add Lights. I use area lights most of the time, but sometimes some spotlights look better. There is no correct light setup. Experiment and see what you like the best. I found that putting one white and super bright area light on top of the character, one behind with the color of the skin, and one darker under and a bit to the right of the skin, like this, gives it a very good look. Another way to add good light and shadows is to download an HDRI file. It's a ready to use environment background, which means it creates a sun and cloud around your render. To add the HDRI file, I added some of the best ones in the description, click on this earth icon, then on color. After that, locate environment texture. And lastly, click on open and find your HDRI file. To rotate it, go to shading tab and then switch from object to world and click on this big box. After that, press Ctrl plus T. Don't forget to switch the view mode to this one and slide the rotation Z value left and right to see how everything looks. You can also try changing the other rotation values. To make your background transparent, click on this camera icon, then scroll down and select film option. Check the transparent box. Custom models. Before I tell you how to render your models properly, I want to show you how to get almost any mob or item from mods. Step 1 is to get the mod you want. Then, download WinRAR, which is a free unzipping app that also allows you to open any secret file. So after downloading it, right-click the mod file and select Open with WinRAR. This kind of window will pop up. Now, you can select all the files inside of it and create a new normal folder. And put all the files in there. After all these steps, you can use the search menu and try to find the name of the mob or item you want to get. It might take a few minutes, but I promise you it's worth it. After all the files with that name will show up, find the one that has .geo at the end. 
Take that file and put it into Blockbench. Next, go through the files again and find one that has .png at the end. That is our texture file. Drag and drop it into Blockbench and select the Import Texture option. If the files you got are the right ones, you should get your custom mob or items from mod. But we are not done yet. Before putting it in Blender, we need to get it ready for exporting and pose it in Blockbench. If you have a mob, then we can start posing it. Imagine how you want it to look like in the final render. Select the body part by clicking on the folder that it's in. Then use this button to rotate and this one to move. After you're finished, export it like this. Click File, Export, select the GLTF type of file, then turn on this feature if you have a mob, but if you have a model that you can't pose, for example a gun, then leave it off. Make sure that this other feature is off. By the way, if you want to have a cape, create Minecraft skin and scroll here until you find cape. Then import a cape texture. Export it into Blender the same way as I showed earlier. Another way to get custom items and mobs is by going to this website called Sketchfab and searching up any model you want. They have a huge library of different 3D models. Keep in mind that some of them are not free. When downloading, I usually use GLB or GLTF. Try which one works better. There's also another feature of Blender that I want to tell you about. When you have a model of something and it's made up of many little pieces, select all of them and right click. Click join if it shows up. If it doesn't, then click collection and create a new collection. Name it something that is related to the model. Now every time you want to select the model, just double click on the collection icon right here and the model will be fully selected. Rendering. And here we are, our last step, rendering. This is the finale of everything we did before. To make your render look good and not take ages to make, apply the exact same settings as me. Switch to Cycles Render Engine right here. Turn on the Denoise box. If you have a bad PC or laptop, put max samples somewhere between 40 to 200. And if you have a stronger one, just put as much as you want. I usually use around 2000 to 3000 samples. The more samples you put, the better the quality. But it also affects your render speed. Less samples makes your picture render faster. Scroll to the film option and click on this box if you don't want the background to be rendered. I recommend rendering the background and the main objects separately. To do that, find all of your objects in this window. I always put all of the objects into collections so it's easier to find them. Then click on this little camera icon for all the objects that you don't want to render. To render, click F12 on your keyboard or go to render, render image. You can start the render and see if you missed any. Then just close the window and finish turning the ones you missed off. After your render is complete, do the opposite. Turn all of the little cameras on for objects and turn it off for backgrounds. Render again and you will have two separate renders. But if you are a sweaty hardcore guy who wants to cut out the objects yourself, then render both the background and the objects at the same time. After it finishes, click on image, save as, and save it to your files. The art of Blender will come with time. If you don't understand something or have problems with any of the steps, join my Discord server where I can help you. Subscribe, like, and comment. Make sure to share the video if it helped you. I hope you have a great day and God bless. Thank you.